Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to be working on this back room. I need to put a storage shelf. I want to make some more food packaging possibly, some tools to hang on the wall. It's a really small room, but I'm going to try to cram a bunch of stuff in here and fill it up. So I'm going to put together the frame for this workbench first the frame that will hold the tabletop so that it's not too thin. I like to always at least make the thickness of whatever material I'm using be a sixteenth of an inch and that way it's it won't be too flim it won't be flimsy. Wait, I gotta think about this. Okay. I had a feeling I was putting the glue on the wrong end. And I also etched that wood grain into it too. I did all of that ahead of time. I just wanted this bench to look a little bit more weathered because it's near that back door. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let that dry. Each side is going to have a I'm gonna call this a support bar, but it's mainly so that I could put a shelf. So there will be one shelf under this workbench. I think I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch. That's where the top of the board will sit. I I'm going to start the bar right below my mark. I could go above the mark if I wanted, but I don't know how high things are going to be that are gonna go on this shelf. So I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room. And I just wanna keep it even with the edge. I'm trying to just make this very, very basic. Nothing complicated, nothing fancy. It's just for that back room where I picture there's a lot of boxes and barrels. And I'm hoping to add some tools to the wall. Okay, now I have both pieces. And I'm going to glue them on the inside like this. Let me put just a little bit of glue in each one of these corners and I'm making sure that I'm keeping that support bar that's for the shelf to the inside. Here is one side. Oh, I need to wipe this glue away. I was checking the inside and completely forgot about checking the outside. Here's one side. It's just kind of rustic. Again, I made sure that my shelf support bar was facing to the inside. I think what I'm going to do on this sh for the shelf, I really would like to put individual boards, but I think I'm just going to fake it on that shelf. I might put the individual boards up on top. Yeah. And this piece is going to be the shelf. But I want it to look like it's boards too. I'm just going to randomly make some lines with my ball stylus embossing it to represent the slats of wood. And I'm not measuring and keeping them the exact width. I think I'll still carve some wood grain into it. There we go. So it looks a little bit like this. And then once it's painted, that'll probably really show up well. And now I'm just going to put some grain into each board. I'm not gonna cross into that uh, embossed area to help it look more natural that this is little planks of wood. And there's with the wood grain. And I think I'm on one of these sides. I'm just going to kind of dig at it, rough up the edge like it had things that bumped into it and dinged it. That way it doesn't look so perfectly straight. But if you try this, be careful because I'm sure it can be dangerous. I'm going to put some glue on those shelf supports now and just go ahead and glue it in place. I'm just putting the glue right on the top edge. 
make sure that I put the front because I didn't rough up this edge I only roughed up the front edge so I wanted to make sure that that side that doesn't have the grain it isn't out instead okay and there's my little rugged rugged little shelf I decided I I probably should cut some supports for inside of here since I'm not going to make it a solid piece like on the bottom that way when I have my boards up here going across over time they don't start to sag so I'm going to start gluing the first one because I only have four and I want to evenly space them and I want it to hang over leave kind of a lip in the front and on the sides I'm going to put a few clamps on it the back one I don't want it to hang over I do on the sides but I don't on the back that way it'll sit up flush next to the wall I'm going to seal it with some Mod Podge I'm going to paint this the same color as I do the barrels base but I'm not going to use the wash on it and that way it won't darken it I've been wanting to try that I'm base coating it with this Anita's Latte it's my favorite uh, color to use to base coat when I want light colored wood and I'm just applying a thin coat really thin I made a wash using these two browns this one's uh, burn umber from artist loft and this one is moccasin from Anita's I've never done this before but I'm gonna just try mixing these two colors because I've usually either used one or the other for the wash over my wood but I'm going to try just mixing them and maybe come up with a different color and I try to take my brush strokes in the same direction as my wood grain or if there isn't any wood grain scratched into it I try to go in the direction that I think the wood grain would be I really like how this color turned out I am going to add a little bit of chalk pastel the brown and black mixed together to give it a little bit of dirt here and there but not much because I don't want it to get too dark and here it is complete here's how it looks in the back room so far I need to decide if I'm going to put a shelf or hang some tools or both I'm thinking I'll do both I'll put a shelf and hang some tools and maybe put some boxes underneath here I've decided to make a simple shelf that's going to go above the workbench or the storage bench so it's four layers of the paperboard and I have put the wood scratch the wood grain into it and I've roughed up the edges on on just the sides that are going to be facing out and this will go above my storage table in the back room it's just a simple shelf I'm painting it the same exact way that I painted the storage unit shelf. So I started off with the Mod Podge and then I'm going to base coat it with that latte and then I'm going to do the brown wash over it. I'm just using some paper clay. I want to show you, even though I'm not the best with clay, I wanted to show you that I how to make some potatoes, peaches, carrots, eggs, and apples we'll do the potato first I pinched off enough to be the size of a potato in the scale that I'm working on I rolled it in my hand like a ball and then I just kinda started pinching all the sides 
and make sure it's kind of flat on the ends in a shape kind of like a fat tic tac and then I just take something and poke some holes here and there to be the texture of the potato and maybe where the eye is going to start and that's it that's the potato and then the peach is pretty simple so for the peach I, I roll up a little ball and then I take my exacto and I run it down one side put a line in it then I take something and poke the top where the stem would probably be or would have been nothing nothing on the other end and that's it for the peach hopefully adding color to them will <laughs> make them look much better and then for the egg the same thing just pinch off enough of the clay of the size that you think an egg would be in a scale you're working in I roll it in a ball first and then I start to just roll more more on one end gets kind of a teardrop shape and then for an apple I'll just use this egg since it's kind of big for the apples same thing I just roll it roll it into a ball except this time I'm kind of pinching down the bottom not pointing it keeping it flat because an apple is not perfectly round it starts off kind of fat at the top and tapers down then I take my exacto on the bottom and I'm just putting an X and you may have to keep pinching to keep that shape down at the bottom almost like a hot cross bun so you'll have a, a look like that on the bottom and then on the top I just take something pointy and put this area where the where the stems gonna come out and I'm gonna glue something in there later after it's dry to, to be the stem and that's the apple a carrot I start to roll a snake and I don't want it I don't want it this long so I'm going to cut it and you'll end up with something like this you can make your carrot have a funny shape like that and then on the top again I just poke something in there because I'm going to glue some leaves coming out I take my exacto knife and I just put little lines here and there just to get that texture of a carrot it will look something like that I wanted to show you how I painted each one of these pieces while I have all my chalk pastel mess out for the potato I use kind of a tan color and a brown mixed together that's what I have right here and I just laid my potato on the parchment paper and I just started brushing on the color and I just packed it on and here are the potatoes I'm happy with these with the way these turned out I thought these would, would be the worst but they're okay I'm happy with them and then for my eggs I left some of them white and then some of them I used this tan color and I just lightly here and there 
very lightly. So it just looks like one of those brown country eggs. For the carrot, I used a couple of oranges and I just mixed it all together. And just like with the potato, I just pre I just packed it on. I'm wearing a mask too because there is a lot of dust from this from these chalk pastilles. And I put just a little tiny bit of green on the top. And then for the peach, I used the same oranges and I took some light peach color chalk mixed that with some of it not all of the orangey colors and then I just packed it on there's no rhyme or reason and that's the peach here's my other peaches and then for the apple I took this rusty brown some of that and I took some of this it looks like hot pink and then I took some of this pink and I just mixed together the pink and the hot pink and I mixed a little bit of the brown into it but not all of it so that I could put the lighter color on the top or bottom it didn't really matter I was just trying to make it look like maybe one part of the apple was a little bit darker than the other there's the apple so far so that's how I colored my, my vegetables and my eggs and my fruit. Here's how I created the stem for the apples. I took some twine and I separated it and I put, I put glue on one of the, there's three sections and I put glue on one of the sections and then I painted it brown. I cut off a little piece to be the stem and you can always cut it shorter once it's glued on and dried. I took some painted paper and I cut a really tiny leaf and then I glue it up next to the stem. I painted them with diamond glaze to give them a shine. So this one has the diamond glaze and this one does not. And the stem for my peaches is the very same way, except I trimmed it down really short. And I did not shine these up. I kept them the dull color because I thought it looked kind of fuzzy like peaches. And for the carrot, took some of this plastic plant that I have that kind of reminded me of a carrot top and I'm just putting some glue on it and I'm going to push it into the hole that I had on the top of the carrots. So this is the one with the diamond glaze and this is without. It looks good either way. I've pulled out all of the things that I have made for the general store up to this point and I have them all sorted so that I can decide what I want to use in the back room. I made a long shelf that I've glued to the wall above the door. and I've made a shelf over here as well and it's already glued to the wall. This table's not attached. I know it's rather large for that room. It is to scale, but the room is small, but I want I want this room to look packed and really full. I was hoping to put this scale in the paper cutter back here, but I think this shelf sitting too low and I couldn't go up higher because of the ceiling height. So I guess it will have to go up front. Okay, are you ready for it? I've got the back room finished.
I filled it up as much as I could. I don't have anything glued down to the floor. I have it all like glued to that table or the shelves. But I may glue this barrel down to the floor though. It's a very small room, so I'm trying to do the best I can to film everything for you. So here's that little shelf that's above the door. And then here's the other side. I wanted it to look really full because when you're peeking in the windows, if you were just looking at a little table or something, you might not see things. It might not seem as interesting. So I made this table a little wider than I, when it really needed to be, but I figured that that would really help make the room look full if you were peeking in the front windows. And here's peeking in the back door. Of course, I will have different lighting. The lighting will probably be a lot dimmer. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. Maybe it'll just feel cozier back here with the dimmer lights. Let me adjust my lights for you. I'm trying to peek through the window for you, but it's focusing on the door and not through to the back. I really wish you could see it in person. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.